Hi, I'm Kelly with CitrusCycles.ca. I'm excited to be here with the 2019 D-Lite GX Roll-Off made in Germany by Riesen Muller. It's one of my favorite e-bikes. In fact, I actually have one myself. It's very comfortable, very safe, and it's essentially maintenance-free. You can ride all day anywhere you want to go. And so for the details on the bike, the current specs, the current pricing, to order online, you can visit our website at CitrusCycles.ca. There you'll find our contact information, so you can email or call with any questions you have, or you can set up an appointment to come try it here in beautiful Ladysmith on Vancouver Island. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the bike, then I'm going to take you through the detailed specs, then I will take you on an extensive ride test. So I recognize that this video is going to be long, so feel free to skip around. I'm going to, like I said, I'll start with an overview, then I'll get into the detailed specs. If you don't care about the detailed specs, skip to the uh, ride test. On the ride test, I'm going to do a compressed version of, you know, four or five minutes of mixed terrain, and then I'll take you on a really long ride test just to show you what you can do with all the bike. Uh, so let me start by giving you a quick summary of some of my favorite features and then I'll get into the details. So right off the top here, one of my favorite features is what Reason Muller calls control technology. So this is an incredibly comfortable bike, both for short and for long rides. But the control technology is more than just making it comfortable. It makes it a very safe bike, both for you or if you put a child's uh, seat on the rear rack, it makes it very safe for them as well. So in addition to the control technology, which gives us a uh, front uh, suspension fork here and a uh, rear shock, it also has a really comfortable riding position, so a nice elevation on the stem here, a little bit of rise on the uh, bars, really comfortable grips, and all those things make it a really comfortable uh, ride. I love the fact that we're using the roll-off speed hub on this bike with the DX, a GX roll-off. That's a 14-speed internally geared hub coupled with a Gates carbon belt and it's electronic shifting, so it makes it really easy uh, because I love riding bikes, but not so much maintaining them. So with that Gates carbon fiber belt and the uh, roll-off hub, the drivetrain is essentially going to last forever and requires very little maintenance. The e-shift means that I can shift while I'm stopped. So right now, even though we're stopped, boom, I can shift to a different gear, really easy to do. Uh, it automatically downshifts for me, in fact, so I don't even have to do that. When I come to a stop, automatically downshifts. I can also shift while I'm uh, coasting or while I'm pedaling, so super easy to use. We have some really steep hills here in Ladysmith, and so this roll-off hub with the incredibly wide gear ratio lets me climb them all. It also means that when I'm done climbing and heading back down the hill, I can keep pedaling upwards of 50, 60 kilometers an hour uh, without my legs spinning too fast. I also love having dual batteries. So maybe you're like me and you like to go exploring. And sometimes you do longer rides. Or maybe you just want to ride all week and not have to worry about charging up your batteries. Or maybe you're like my wife and she's always a little bit worried about running out of battery and pedaling a heavy bike home. So you'll love having the dual battery feature because you'll be able to ride all day without having to worry about charging it. There are a number of other features that I love about this bike, such as this incredibly bright Supernova M99 Mini Pro 25. It's uh, very, very bright and even has a high beam, low beam. So you can see there's a high beam button here and we can adjust that to high beam and uh, low beam. Uh, the brake light. This is really cool. Uh, you can see it's uh, quite bright and when I press one of the brake levers up here, see if I can reach that far, it gets brighter. So as soon as you squeeze either one of the brake levers, it becomes brighter. Um, in fact, uh, you can see that rear light when it's illuminated from almost a kilometer away. Seems like a little thing, but I also really love the integrated dual water bottles here. So this is a cageless design. All I do is lift up bottle comes off you can see there's kind of uh, hooks in there for the bottle hooks on the bike and it just slides right back on and that seems like a little thing but it's a big deal to me because a lot of times e-bikes don't have anywhere to put water bottles and it's nice if you have two that come with the bike to keep your bike safe reason Muller also includes 
the uh, Abus Bordeaux folding lock here. This is actually has an alarm built in the front here. I'll show you the details of the lock in a little bit, but it's key to like to the battery. So you'll only need one key for the whole bike, which is really very convenient. And of course, another favorite feature is the fact that we're using Bosch's mid-drive, the Performance Line CX. Gives you lots of torque for climbing hills, very reliable, very responsive, very natural feeling. So it rides just like a regular bike. So there's lots to love about the bike. It is incredibly capable, very comfortable. It's going to last a really long time, require very little maintenance. Now, if you are looking for a bike like this, but you want to do mountain biking on really difficult technical trails with lots of jumps and leaps and drops and stuff, then you might want to check out my video review of the D-Lite Mountain Roll-Off on our website at citruscycles.ca. Or if you're looking for a step through that's really easy to get on and off and still has the roll-off and the really comfortable riding position and the dual batteries, then check out my review of the homage, which is also on our website at citruscycles.ca. Otherwise, for everything else, this is an incredible bike to consider. As I mentioned, super comfortable, very reliable, lots of fun to ride. Riesenmuller e-bikes are custom assembled in Germany, and if you read the specs on the bike and then come and ride it, you'll experience what that attention to detail, the excellence in engineering, and the focus on quality really means. The design of the bike and every component was carefully selected to come together and provide you with the best experience possible. And when you get on it and ride it, you'll see what I mean. So the D-Lite is available in three different sizes. This is kind of the medium size, uh, four different colors. So this is the uh, solar orange, they call it. Uh, I kind of liken it to the color of an arbutus tree when the, uh, when the bark starts uh, shedding. And uh, you can also get it in uh, white, gray, or deep sea blue metallic. Because they're custom assembling the bikes in Germany, it gives them a lot of flexibility. So in addition to a, the uh, roll-off with the Gates carbon fiber belt here, you can also get the uh, what's called the D-Lite GT Touring. And that has a traditional chain and an 11-speed cassette, and then they put uh, Schwalbe Supermoto X tires on there. If you like the idea of a belt for little maintenance, you want to be able to shift while you're stopped, then you could also go with the uh, D-Lite GT Vario. And that uses the Enviolo Nuvinci N380. It's a continuously variable transmission. And again, the car Gates carbon belt. And of course, what we're looking at here is with the uh, roll-off speed hub, uh, with the electronic shifting. And not only do you get that really awesome roll-off hub with a wide gear ratio and electronic shifting, the Gates carbon fiber belt, but you also get upgraded to these Rock Razor tires from Schwalbe, which have a lot of uh, traction. Uh, the GX name, so the other bikes were the GT, Grand Touring kind of bikes. The GX, to me, this means it's a Grand Expedition bike, and so you're going to be able to go on those really exciting expeditions with the bike. So as I mentioned, for the detailed specs, uh, comparing all the different versions, you can head over to our uh, website at citrusycles.ca. Okay, so now I've given you an overview of the bike, the features I love about it, and why I have one myself. Now I'm gonna dive into the, the details. And so if you prefer, you can go ahead and skip to the ride test, but right now I'm gonna kinda dive into what makes this bike the bike that it is and why I like it so much. So I've talked about the idea of the control technology. So the D-Lite, along with the homage and the culture step-through and the load cargo e-bike from uh, Riesenmuller uses what they call control technology. So basically it consists of the front suspension fork and that's uh, not unusual for an e-bike to have. A suspension fork is going to give you more comfort, it's going to uh, provide less fatigue and it gives you more control over the bike over uneven surfaces. So when I had this bike built for me in Germany I decided to go with the upgraded uh, suspension. So this is actually uh, a Fox uh, 34 Performance. And uh, you could also get it with the uh, Suntour Ion Air Fork, which is very good, but I really like the Fox. It's a really great upgrade. Um, to me, it was well worth it. And you know, the neat thing is both the Suntour and the Fox are specifically made for e-bikes. So in an e-bike, uh, it's definitely heavier, right? Especially the D-Lite has two batteries. Um, you're gonna be riding uh, longer distances. You're going to be riding differently than on a regular bike. And so, 
it's nice to see manufacturers making you know a really strong tough fork that responds uh, differently given the weight of the bike than a regular fork and uh, that's a nice thing that uh, Reason Miller is doing is really recognizing that uh, well and, and Reason Miller only makes e-bikes so they're not taking an existing bike and trying to make an e-bike and so that's why when there are components like this that are e-bike optimized they're going to uh, use that so it's stronger it's designed to handle the uh, the weight of the uh, bike we do have a through axle with a quick release on the uh, side here um, to keep you safe we've got reflectors on the fork which is uh, really nice of course you can uh, control uh, how uh, soft the fork is you can actually lock it out all the way to firm if you want or keep it open there's rebound adjustment on the bottom and of course it's an air fork as well so I've got an air valve under here that I can use to adjust the uh, air based on my weight in fact R&M actually gives you a shock pump, which is unusual, even a lot of our full suspension mountain bikes where it's really important to set up your suspension, they don't come with one. So R&M does include that for you so you can get that uh, set up. So what makes this bike unique, because a lot of bikes obviously have the front suspension fork, what makes it unique is that we've got on the rear wheel here a independent swing arm and a shock. So you might be thinking, well, you know, I'm not mountain biking, so really I don't need that uh, rear shock, I don't need the independent rear swing arm. Um, but as part of Reason Mueller's control technology, just like the front suspension gives you more comfort and less fatigue, it also gives you more control. So both of your wheels are always on the ground so that you're safe and secure on your bike. I'm probably not doing a very good job explaining it, but really, if you can, come try it for yourself. So when I'm riding an R&M bike with this control technology, we've got the independent rear suspension, the front suspension, I find myself traveling, I'm, I'm more confident, I'm riding at higher speeds, and I really notice this on uneven terrain, roads with potholes, and you'll see in the ride test, you know, I'll be riding on uh, broken pavement. And that's where I notice the, the rear suspension being helpful, but also around corners. So there's this kind of misperception that a full suspension bike, as we would call it, you know, is really only for expert riders. You know, I'm, I'm not an advanced rider. I don't need the control technology. But in fact, it's ideal for anyone that isn't a super confident cyclist because it gives you more control, more safety and more comfort. So not only are you improving your safety because you're able to handle more difficult situations such as broken pavement or railway lines tram lines gravel potholes all the things you know that uh, can come up unexpectedly it also makes you more predictable for motorists because you aren't swerving or slowing down or speeding up to avoid obstacles and so when you have a bike like this that you feel more confident on that is comfortable to ride then you're going to ride more often you're going to take uh, longer rides and you're just going to start riding everywhere and that's what we want to see when you get an e-bike so certainly the uh, the control technology is very unique to uh, Reason Muller and another very unique feature of this bike is the roll-off speed hub so this is an internally geared 14 speed transmission with electronic shifting made in Germany. It has a number of advantages to a traditional cassette and derailleur. So as I mentioned already, you can shift while you stop. While the bike is not moving, I can easily press the buttons here and shift to a different uh, gear. Of course, the bike has to be on. Uh, and actually, that's a good point. Uh, sometimes people are concerned, what happens if my battery runs out? How am I going to shift? Well, don't worry about that. The Bosch system is very clever. First of all, it's going to tell you how much further you can go before your battery runs out. But even when your battery does run out, it keeps a reserve. So that reserve is going to run your lights and your electronics shifting. So when I press the button at the top here, you'll be able to hear it shifting in, in the back here. There we go. 180 milliseconds, it shifts. So very, very quick. You can see it's shifting while we're stopped. You can shift through all the gears at once. So let me show you the gear that we're in right now is eight. I can press the button and I can actually hold it and it'll shift three at a time. And now I'm in gear one. Do that again. And now you can see I've shifted all the way up to gear 14, just like that while we're stopped or while you're riding. 
So it only takes 180 milliseconds to shift, very, very fast. Combined with all that, it has a 520% gear ratio. So that means the low climbing gear makes it super easy to climb up any hill. Well, the high gear means you can pedal down hills really, really fast. So uh, if you want a really reliable solution, uh, we've seen roll-off hubs now with over 300,000 kilometers on them. So why did those things matter? I mean, why would you spend the money on investing in a roll-off? Well, like I said, shifting while stopped or coasting is really great. You don't have to worry about, oh, I'm coming up to a stop sign. I better downshift so that it's easier to start pedaling. Or maybe you just all of a sudden have to stop. Somebody cuts in front of you and you didn't get a chance to downshift. I don't know if that's happened to you. We're in the wrong gear and you try to pedal and it's so hard to pedal because you're in one of your high gears and you're starting on a hill. You don't have to worry about that. In fact, with this optional auto downshift, as soon as I stop, the bike's actually going to shift into whatever gear I specify. By default, it's five, which is great because that's a really good uh, starting gear. So it, it's nice that uh, you don't have to worry about uh, stop, uh, remembering to downshift. In fact, you know, we do bike tours and that's really for a lot of people the biggest thing that takes them the whole length of the tour to figure out is hey we're stopping better downshift because otherwise it'll be hard to start with the roll off you don't have to worry about that i live in a really hilly area and if you're like me in the past you really do whatever you can to avoid stopping in the middle of a hill knowing that it's going to be really hard again to pedal to get going with the roll off you don't have to worry about that if i stop in the middle of the hill all i have to do is put the assistance up to turbo at the top there shift into my easier gear because i can do that while i'm stopped and no problem getting started uh, it also means that uh, you can uh, shift through all of the gears so i can anticipate needing an easier gear while i'm coming down a hill so i don't know if you've done that where you're kind of going down a hill and then you've got a steep hill to climb back up the other side you're coasting down the hill and, and this is a silly thing that we sometimes do on bikes with a regular chain cassette and derailleur is you're coasting down the hill you're braking because you want to slow down but at the same time you're pedaling because you have to shift uh, with a roll-off you don't have to pedal to shift so you can actually fly through your gears while you're going down the hill to be prepared for the right gear when you are climbing back up the hill with this 520% gear ratio, I've already mentioned that it makes it really easy to climb hills. It also means that if you want to go fast, you can. So I can actually, on this bike, go 50, 55, 60 kilometers an hour and still pedal and not have my leg spinning too quickly. Whereas on most other bikes, most bikes will have maybe a 380% gear ratio. Once you get to the 40, 45, your legs just can't keep up and so you're just spinning really fast and not doing anything. With this roll-off hub, you really can contribute to power at those higher speeds. Now the electronic shifting is smooth and reliable and really easy to use, right? So it just automatically, it, it shifts. It works every time you press the button. One of the biggest complaints in the past with the roll-off was the use of the mechanical twist shift. Now, all you have to do is press the button and in 180 milliseconds, it shifts. Now, the cool thing is that the roll-off e-shift is working in conjunction with the Bosch motor. So when you shift, it actually tells the motor, hey, we're shifting. And so for that brief time, that 180 milliseconds it takes to shift, the Bosch system completely cuts power to the drivetrain. And that helps facilitate the shift because really any drivetrain, whether traditional chain cassette derailleur, the uh, Enviolo Navinci N380, any of those, if you're pedaling under really high load and try to shift, it's not good for your drivetrain and it might make it harder for it to shift under load. So it's nice knowing that this system is working together to ensure that you uh, can actually keep pedaling if you want um, because the system is going to take care of cutting the power and making sure that that shift is nice and smooth. Now, in reality, yes, you can pedal hard and shift without interrupting your pedaling, but you will find that things will run a little bit smoother if you uh, either coordinate the button press so that uh, the shift happens when your pedals are up and down, because when your pedals are up and down like that, there's no torque on them. So eventually you'll get actually pretty good at doing that that's what i i can do um or you know just ease off slightly on your pedaling and uh that will help the shift happen and i'll show you what i mean on the uh, ride test it might sound complicated maybe i've over explained it it's actually really easy all you do is press the button and it shifts <laughs> so and you'll see that on the ride test 
Uh, in fact, with the new eShift, I, I think that what's going to happen is that's going to make the roll-off hub really, really popular in a way that it wasn't in the, in the, bath, in the past. So from a maintenance perspective, we don't have to worry about cables uh, stretching uh, because, well, there aren't any cables, it's electronic. Um, you're not going to worry about the gears shifting when you don't expect them to and not shifting when you want them to. All those things can happen on a traditional drivetrain when things get out of whack. Or if you've experienced that where you, you know, press the, the shifter and nothing happens and then a little later, clunk, uh, it shifts and uh, that isn't going to happen. So really, maintenance-wise, um, you know, all you have to worry about is an annual oil change. It's very easy to uh, do yourself if you wish. We have a kit for it, but of course, any bike shop can do it as well. And the roll-offs are used by people that just want a bike that's going to last for forever. So, like I said, there's, there's speed hubs with over 300,000 kilometers on it. So, likely, this will last even longer than your bike. And often, people move them from uh, bike to bike. And the reason for that is it's very, very durable. So, all of the gears inside are protected from the elements. Um, there's, uh, you know, if you look at a traditional drivetrain, you've got that derailleur hanger hanging down here, right? And that's picking up all of the dirt and the gunk from the road and it gets really dirty and really is the worst place. Putting the gears, you know, kind of low on the back of the bike where it's going to get full of dirt and get hit by things when you're riding is really the worst place that you can put it. So having everything sealed in here, maintenance free is really beautiful. Now, speaking of maintenance free, that's the other nice thing about this bike is we are using a Gates carbon belt. The carbon belt doesn't need to be cleaned and oiled like a chain and it lasts much longer than a chain. Living here on Vancouver Island, uh, this is a beautiful uh, kind of winter day because it's not raining. Most of the time in the winter, it's raining. And uh, so the trails and even the roads get really mucky and dirty. And so with this Gates belt, I love being able to go for a ride and with the roll off, I get home and I'm done. I don't have to clean my chain. I don't have to clean my cassette. I don't have to worry about all the grunge that I picked up on the road and my jockey wheels and the derailleur. I'm, I'm done. I don't have to do anything. And so I love having that maintenance free aspect. Don't have to worry the chain is going to rust. You know, I don't have that feeling of, oh, I feel bad because I didn't clean my drivetrain. Now it's going to rust. So it's really nice. If you uh, prefer not doing maintenance, this is a great solution. Or maybe you, you put your bike on a boat or you have other uh, reasons to worry that your chain is going to rust. Maybe that's happened to you in the past. You don't have to worry about that. I think, and again, maybe my imagination, but to me, this is really quiet and smooth when I'm riding. It just feels really quiet and I love that. So interestingly, Roloff is actually really picky about how their hubs get used on bikes because they want to make sure that, you know, their reputation for a hub that lasts forever and is maintenance free and trouble free uh, is extended. So for that reason, Roloff does require that uh, you use a snubber when you use a Gates carbon belt. And that basically keeps the tension on the belt the uh, same uh, throughout the whole ride. So if the, chain, if the tension kind of changes during pedaling, the belt could ratchet off the end here, and uh, of course that would be uh, a problem. So the D-Lite has this independent rear swing arm, the shock, and so that means the whole back end here is going to be uh, moving up and down. And so the tension on the belt is also going to change as the rear wheel moves up and down. So for this reason, R&M has engineered this really clever uh, snubber combined with a belt tensioner that uh, basically allows the belt to have the same tension regardless of what's happening with the uh, suspension on the back here. So this little pivot point here uh, basically allows the tension to be the same no matter what's happening at the back end here. And there's a little bit of a spring in here. You can see I can move that. So we've got the both uh, basically a snubber and a tensioner and it's it's really a very clever design. It's a great example of that German engineering. Uh, it's an elegant solution to a problem that really in the past meant most full suspension bikes with a roll-off were using a chain because it was hard to solve that problem. Another really uh, good example of their clever engineering is that the belt is running completely above the chainstay. So this is the chainstay here. And if you look at your bike at home, you'll probably see that if you've got a, a chain that it runs above and then below the chain stay. And uh, when using a chain, that's fine, it's not a problem. When you need to replace that chain because it's above and below the chain stay, you actually break the chain and then put a new chain on and close it up. 
Uh, obviously, with a belt, you can't do that. You can't break the belt and put it back together. And so uh, you can either uh, make the belt run above and below the chainstay. And if you do that, then since the belt can't break, you're actually going to put a hole in the chainstay itself. Maybe there's a little uh, bolt that you loosen off, take that piece out, and now there's a hole that you can pass the belt back and forth through. Uh, a more robust solution is to run the belt either completely above or completely below the chainstay. That way you don't have to have an opening in the frame. There's no break here. It's all continuous and this is a really clever ingenious design where the belt is running completely above the um, chainstay. So many, 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 many kilometers from now we'll start to see uh, maybe some wear on the belt. At that point we want to put a new belt on and we've got a quick release on the roll off here so all we do is open that up drop the rear wheel put the new belt on put the wheel back on we're good to go uh, so it's really a, a, a very clever solution now speaking of uh, chains the D-Lite mountain roll off does still use a chain and you can find my video re review of it on our website my understanding from R&M is that they felt that with the D-Lite mountain roll off you're going to be doing you know big bumps, uh, well not bumps, big jumps and leaps and drops and things like that. And so in those cases, if you're riding really aggressively, they felt that a chain with a tensioner on it uh, would be a little bit more of a durable, say, solution than going with the uh, belt. But, you know, having said that, I've been off-road off riding with my D-Lite GX Roll-Off. I've done you know, moderately crazy things with it, and I haven't had any problems. So I don't uh, expect that, and certainly I love having that belt from a maintenance perspective. So the combination of having the roll-off hub and the uh, belt is definitely uh, a bigger investment than a cr traditional drivetrain. But for me, it'll actually save me money in the long run because every few uh, thousand kilometers on a regular bike with a chain cassette and derailleur, I'm replacing the chain, I'm replacing the cassette, I'm replacing the derailleur, and that all adds up. So this, you know, a long time from now, I'll have to replace the belt, but otherwise it's going to um, really require very little maintenance. The other thing for me that's a big deal is it saves me time. The, more, the less time I have to maintain my bike, the more time I have to ride it, and I don't have as much time on my hands as I would like to. So uh, I love, I don't mind investing in that because I know it's going to save me money and save me time. All this talk about the belt and the uh, hub, the only thing that I, I'm not keen on, well, it's not that I'm not keen on it, it hasn't been a problem for me, but I could see for some people, they might like to have some sort of belt guard on here so that if you're riding with a skirt or long pants or something, and you might be worried that it kind of gets caught in there. It's not like a chain, you're not gonna get grease or anything. I haven't had that problem at all. Maybe it never happens, I don't know. But um, certainly on some of their bikes, they do have on the, on the supercharger, for example, which doesn't have the control technology. So we don't have to worry about this, this kind of uh, snubber, tensioner type of system. They do have a, a belt guard, and I can see that being a, a nice feature to add. So this is the D-Lite GT Vario, and it features the Enviolo Continuously Variable Hub. It's previously known as the Nuvinci N380, and you can still shift while you're stopped or while you're pedaling. While you're stopped, you can access around 60% of the uh, range available, and of course the full range while pedaling. So this is continuously variable. There aren't specific gears and it's infinitely variable between the high and the low gear. To control that, you've got this kind of twist shifter here, and you can see there's a little uh, icon. There's a cyclist heading up a hill, and so if I want it to be harder to pedal, that is a kind of a harder gear or higher gear ratio, then I can twist it towards me and make it flatter. And if I'm heading up a steep hill, I, or I want to make it easier to pedal, then I twist it and see how the cyclist now is going up a hill. Because it's continuously variable, there are no specific gears, so it is infinitely variable. I can basically, as I climb a hill, as the grade changes, if it's a variable uh, grade on the hill, I can simply say, oh, okay, it's too hard to pedal. Let me make it easier to pedal. Oh, now I'm cruising along pretty well. Uh, my legs are spinning too quickly. Twist it down flatter and make it a little bit harder to pedal. So very intuitive. Basically, I tell people, you know, if you want it to be easier to pedal, going up a hill, make it easier. And going down a hill or on flat, 
make it harder. And the great thing is you can shift while you're stopped and of course while you're pedaling. Uh, now it is a 380% gear ratio between the, the lowest uh, and the highest gear, not uh, the 520% that you'll find with the, with the roll-off. So the climbing gear isn't as easy as with the roll-off. And of course the, uh, the top gear, the, the kind of the flat gear, when you're pedaling really fast on this bike, I find that uh, you know once you're closer to that 40 kilometers an hour, your legs are going to be spinning too fast and you can't uh, go much quicker than that, whereas a roll-off does have the wider gear ratio. And of course we do have the uh, Gates carbon belt here as well, just like on the uh, roll-off. And instead of the Rock Razor tires, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, we have the Schwalbe Supermoto X tires. These are a great tire. We do have a reflective sidewall in it, which is really nice. It's what we call a balloon tire, so there's a high volume of air in there at low pressure. And that means that it can really, the tire can act also as suspension and really kind of absorb a lot of the bumps and vibrations from the road. It's a really interesting tire profile because, uh, as you can see, it's kind of rounded here. So when you're on pavement, you're really only running along kind of the center of the tire here. And that means you've got uh, very little rolling resistance. You can roll really quickly. But we've got a 2.4 inch wide tire so that when you get into sand, gravel, soft uh, kind of trails, then the whole tire width comes in and gives you all that traction, control, and stability. So you'll be able to climb steep things without spinning out. And you'll be able to uh, you know, maneuver easily without worrying about loss of traction and stability. So I do really like these Supermoto X tires. Really, the only downside of these tires is when you get into mud, you know, they don't really have knobs, uh, so it doesn't work that well. But wet conditions, not a problem. Hard packed gravel, sand, that sort of thing works out really well. And they do have a fairly high degree of puncture resistance. These are actually, uh, you know, we've got these tires on a number of bikes. They're performing really, really well. They're lasting a really long time because of the compound. They're um, a much thicker tire, uh, good degree of puncture resistance. And again, I do like that uh, reflective sidewall in there as well. The D-Light comes with two 500 watt hour Bosch power pack batteries. Obviously this gives you tremendous range, but not only does it give you extra range, but it also is going to prolong the lifespan of the battery. And that's because Bosch designed the system to draw 5% from one battery and then switch and draw 5% from the other battery. That's because a battery when continuously discharged is under higher stress and that has a shorter lifespan. When a battery is discharged 5% and then rests and then is discharged again, that actually is lower stress on the battery and so that helps prolong the lifespan of the battery. Now you don't have to ride the bikes with both batteries. Of course they're removable with the key. All you do is put the key in and take the battery off. And uh, you get a Bosch pin cover so that if you take the second battery off and ride with the first one, you can cover the pins there so that you don't have to worry about those pins getting uh, dirty or uh, corroded. The cool thing about Bosch batteries, so this is the Power Pack 500, is Bosch is uh, really focused on making sure that these batteries are going to be available well into the future. So they don't allow a bike manufacturer like Riesen Muller to design their own batteries. And the reason for that is fairly clear. Bosch knows that many years from now they'll still be able to have these batteries and that there'll be many, many bikes that rely on that battery design. So it's worth their uh, investment. Uh, in having lots of inventory of those batteries for years to come. Whereas I think their concern would be if it were a Riesen Muller battery and Riesen Muller made their own battery, that maybe it isn't worth their time many, many years from now having those spare batteries. So it's nice knowing that not only will Bosch have them, but Bosch also has this neat thing they've done in terms of backwards compatibility. So as I mentioned, this is a 500 watt hour battery. A few years ago, 400 watt hours was the maximum that Bosch uh, actually had. And so when they came up with the 500, which gives you 25% more range, they purposely made it backwards compatible and interchangeable with the older version. So had you bought a Bosch bike a few years ago with a 400 watt hour, you could actually walk into our bike shop, buy a 500, put it on your bike and ride away. And I really uh, like uh, having that reliability of uh, Bosch. So you may be wondering, okay, do you actually think that you'll need dual batteries? Will you actually ride enough to appreciate having those? Obviously, I can't answer that for you. What I can tell you is based on our customers coming back to us and telling us that they never imagined <laughs> that they would ride their bikes that often and that far, you might end up really appreciating having those dual batteries. 
we often see that someone comes in, they invest in an e-bike for riding around town or the commuting, and they're kind of thinking, yeah, you know, I'm not going to really ride that far. But then they discover kind of this joy of, of touring, of just exploring, of going up a really steep hill just to see what's at the top of it. And that's what I love. I love to go exploring. I love to go on old forestry roads, fire roads, head down bush roads. I see a road I've never been down, I wonder what's down there. And for me, it's easy because I've got the dual batteries. I know that if I want to, I can put it on turbo and climb all the way to the top of the hill and uh, not have to worry about it. So I really love having those uh, dual batteries. Okay, and I've already mentioned that uh, the bike comes with the Supernova M99 Mini Pro 25 up front and these uh, really bright, let me turn them back on for you, really bright Supernova taillights uh, at the back here. And they do brighten when you pull the brake lever, pull that again for you. There we go, you can see they get really bright and it, it's really great because look at, even at the side you can see really bright uh, light that shines both the sides and uh, all the way back. And uh, really that's gonna help motorists to know that you're slowing down because I'm good at signaling my turns but not so good at, at signaling stops. Uh, with the Supernova M99 Mini up front on low beam for daytime uh, riding or riding on the road, we've got 600 lumens. And then all we do is press the high beam button up here. There we go. It illuminates to tell us we've got the high beam on. And now we have a 1250 lumens. So that's great for trail riding. And I have ridden this bike on trails at night and definitely I can see far enough ahead that I can maintain a high speed and still be safe. Uh, it's nice having that illumination on the headlight because I have found that when riding on the road you don't want your high beams on uh, because it will be bright for motorists. So it's kind of nice that that's reminding you that they're on. In case you're worried about this button, <laughs> and by the way uh, we've just set up the bike so that the button here is actually integrated with the brake lever. Isn't that cool? The clamp here. Uh, but if you wish we can actually move that and it comes with its own clamp to be clamped as a separate item. But it's kind of cool that you can actually clamp it with the uh, Magira brake lever there. Uh, so if you're worried about that button, apparently it's been tested to at least 500,000 presses. <laughs> uh, the uh, light is, does have 10 automotive grade LEDs. And so really this is one of the few lights that I've ridden with that comes with an e-bike that I can uh, ride at night very safely. I think I mentioned earlier that uh, this tail light is visible from a, almost a kilometer away, which is quite incredible. Uh, speaking of brakes, these are the uh, Magura MT4E. So the E specifies that they are e-bike brakes that send a signal to the light when the lever's pulled. So you can see there's a little wire running from there and a little bit of a, you can see as soon as that is uh, pulled there, there we go, sends the signal to the brake lights at the back uh, to uh, illuminate. Uh, of course they are hydraulic, which means that you're not relying on the strength of your fingers to stop the bike. You could literally stop this bike with one finger on each brake lever down the steepest hill here in Ladysmith and uh, it'll come to a stop. We've got I think 180 millimeter uh, rotors up front here and on the back. And uh, that for this type of bike, it's great. If you were doing a lot of mountain biking on really steep hills, um, maybe you'd want to upgrade that to a 203, but for the style of riding this bike is designed for, they work really well. Uh, because it's hydraulic, the cable, there's no cable. <laughs> so it's not going to stretch. The brakes are self-adjusting. Um, you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, the cable breaking or wearing out. And uh, the levers here are uh, adjustable. You can get them closer, further away. And they're not tool free though. You do need to use an Allen key in there and uh, you can adjust that as well. And as I mentioned earlier, the dual water bottle cages are one of my favorite features of the bike because often on an e-bike it's hard to find room to put them in somewhere and so uh, you can see we've got this uh, kind of uh, system where you can ride with this open. Uh, the water is only going to come out if you actually squeeze it or you can actually ride with it closed as well and uh, to pull the bottles off you just pull straight up and they come off. The rattling you hear is because there's extra parts in there so if you had another bike that you wanted to use these on you simply install the uh, little uh, knobs here uh, where the cage would normally go and then they just slide right on and uh, I just love that because uh, you know you're riding and very easy to reach and two of course is ideal on this bike because you've got dual batteries so of course you want dual water bottle cages as well. 
Okay, now that we've uh, moved inside, I can show you the Abus folding lock with the alarm without uh, drawing too much attention to myself. It's really handy in a number of ways. First, it's mounted on the bike here, so you're always going to have it with you. And uh, a lot of times we're finding people whose bikes are stolen is often because they either use a really cheap cable lock because it's more convenient or they don't bring their really nice lock along because it's too heavy or they can't fit it in their bag or something like that. So it's really nice that it's uh, actually permanently mounted to the bike here, really easy to uh, access and to bring along. The other convenient feature is that the key that we use to lock the uh, lock or unlock it is the same key that we use to lock or unlock the uh, battery. So over the other side here and you can see that the battery uh, uh, key ports are there and there on this side here and uh, the key port for the lock is there as well. So to uh, remove the battery, these are spring-loaded clamps here that kind of hold it in place which is really uh, handy so just open those up and then uh, I'll try to do it with one hand if I can. Uh, you basically pull up, that's going to be a little bit hard with just one hand. Uh, let me try that again, here we go, okay. There we go. So pull that out and it comes out of its mounting uh, position. It is fairly heavy and it's a little bit big because the top part here is an alarm. The bottom part, of course, these are steel bars. They're protected uh, in rubber to protect the uh, frame of your bike. So it gives you a lot more security than you would have with a cable because, of course, it requires a lot uh, more time and specialized tools in order to cut through that uh, steel. Now, of course, any lock can be defeated with enough time and the right tools. Uh, the idea is to be a deterrent and to slow people down, and certainly these steel bars are going to do that. Uh, because it's folding, as you can see, not only does it go very compact, but when I wrap it around the frame, you can see that I can, you know, get this around the, the frame of the bike here, and then there's still enough length here to come around a pole or a bike rack or something that I'm locking it to. So it's very convenient in that it has the convenience of a um, cable lock in that it's easy to wrap around things and nice and compact, but the security of a U-lock in that they are steel uh, bars. Now, new for this year is not only do you get the uh, the folding lock, which uh, was always the case in the past with the D-Lite, but now this alarm feature. So let me show you how that works. Right now, it's not uh, activated. So when I'm riding along, the alarm isn't going to go off. When I want to activate the alarm, obviously I'm going to use the key to unlock it first. So I put the key in and turn it. And interestingly, if you've got one of these locks, um, you'll notice that it actually unlocks from the opposite side of the key. It's kind of an anti-pick uh, type of feature. So now when I pull this out, and again, it's a little bit hard to do with one hand, but pull this out after opening it up, you can see there's actually two positions in there. When it is in one of the positions, the alarm is armed, and in the other position, it's not. So right now, if I put it in the first position, you can see that it'll fold up, it'll go back on the rack, and uh, it won't make a sound. But now, if I put it in the second position, got it in there, you can see it's further in. Now, if I try to fold it up, it won't actually fold up because it's uh, in the armed position, so it's not gonna make that sound while you're riding your bike. And there we go. So as you could uh, hear, at first, it just kind of beeps warnings to you. When it gets bumped, it gets moved. Then it's beeping saying, hey, I'm an alarm, back away. Uh, and then if you continue to uh, cause the lock to move or tamper with it, then you get that really loud 100 decibel uh, alarm that's going off. And the only way then to, and, and by the way, it'll, It'll kind of time out, I think, for 30 seconds and then run again for 30 seconds to help preserve the battery life. There is a battery in there that you can uh, change. Of course, you need the key to uh, change the battery. You can't defeat the lock by simply removing the uh, battery. So then uh, to deactivate the alarm, as you saw, I just use the key and uh, unlock it. So you get the benefits of the security of the folding lock and the turn feature of the alarm. Okay, now we'll run through the rest of the uh, features of the bike and then get into the Bosch drive unit. So I mentioned earlier, it's a very comfortable ride. 
And uh, part of that has been achieved by using these Ergon GP1 uh, grips. They're very comfortable. There's, uh, they're locking, so when you have that bolt tightened to the four newton meters, uh, it's not going to swivel on you as you bear down on it. Uh, but it also means you can loosen it off and adjust the angle to kind of keep your uh, wrists flat as you ride. Very comfortable that way. I like the fact that we've got some rise in the bars here, again, putting you into more of an upright position. And this Ergotech 5 level, security level 5, that means a very robust stem, uh, also elevated to give you a, a, a more of an upright, comfort-oriented riding position. Yet I find they've st struck a good balance. So although the bars come back a, a little bit here on an angle, they're not really far swept back because often then you kind of lose some control over the bike. So I like the way that they've got this compromise that they've really got a great balance actually between being very comfortable but still feeling really in control of your bike. As you'll see on the ride test, I've gone mountain biking with this and I find that I still have enough control, which is important. Uh, we've got an Ergon uh, SMC, SMC4 uh, large saddle on there. Uh, very comfortable gel saddle. There's actually some nice gel in there. It's more of a kind of a performance oriented uh, saddle. I've done long, long rides with that saddle and found it to be very comfortable. Uh, quite appropriate choice for this bike. Uh, the pedals, I would probably change and that's the comment I make on most bikes because a lot of times uh, well some bikes don't even come with pedals anymore so this came with pedals with some kind of uh, bumps here metal pedals to help keep your foot from sliding off we do have reflectors on them um, they're a little bit on the small side for my liking and, it, and again it's not a criticism of, of R&M really they're putting pedals on so you can try the bike realistically when you buy a bike like this or most other bikes you should anticipate needing to change the pedals because yeah, everybody has different choices some people like to go clipless for myself I go with platform pedals with removable pins so I can uh, adjust them and I like the wider pedal uh, you know Eclipse Airliner nice or Crank Brothers makes them we've got lots and lots of uh, pedals here in the store um, so that uh, you can find the perfect pedal and that's definitely something that I would change um, oh, heading back up to the top here, I should have mentioned while I was talking about the stem, this is really cool. This is actually the uh, block lock, and so what that means is that I can only turn my handlebars a certain uh, uh, distance towards the frame of the bike. So once it gets this far, it stops turning, and same with the other way. Uh, if I turn that way at some point, it stops. That will prevent the handlebars from colliding with the... Um, top tube it prevents the uh, fork from scraping the down tube it uh, it's really a, a great feature and uh, i haven't seen that i don't know if i've seen that on any other bikes so that's a, a, a neat feature uh, here's another really interesting feature that you often don't find on a full suspension bike is we do have an integrated rack and uh, that's because uh, on a rack you can't connect it both to the seat tube and to the chain stay like a rack normally is connected uh, because the on the full suspension that uh, rear wheel is moving up and down and so that doesn't work for the rack so this was really clever of reason muller they've connected the rack uh, only to the uh, seat tube here and so it's part of the suspension so if you put a child seat on there or you're doing grocery shopping and you put your eggs in there and you go over a really really bumpy road that's actually part of the same suspension that you are when you're on the saddle so it makes it for a very very smooth ride i really like having that uh, rack and that stability. Uh, we do have blockers here uh, that you can use so you can hang standard uh, pannier bags on here and the blockers will keep the bags from uh, hitting your rear wheel. Two other really cool features about this rack, we've got this integrated bungee cord here. So rather than a spring-loaded uh, clamp which can get uh, really noisy especially as the spring wears out over a lifespan, this is just a rubber uh, uh, bungee cords. So basically we can adjust the size of it. So if you stop and buy something that you didn't expect and need to put it on the rack, I uh, put a, milk, a jug of milk on here for example, uh, you can expand that and then just clamp it on there. So I really like having that uh, bungee. The other cool thing is that for this year now R&M is using the uh, MIK uh, here we go, MIK mounting system. So this rack itself has a capacity of 20 kilos and with that mounting system uh, you can get bags such as this one uh, from um, Basil. It's the uh, trunk bag and basically MIK stands for 
Mounting is key. And so if we look at the bottom of the bag here, you can see there's some mounting hardware built into the bag. And what that allows you to do is you simply uh, slide the bag onto the rack. Uh, there's kind of this little uh, section here that kind of slides in underneath. I don't know if you can see that there. Let me adjust the camera angle so you can see that. Okay, here we go. So you can see kind of under there. Anyways, it slides into the rack and then there's a push button back here to uh, release it. So it just kind of clamps in. Let's see if I can I'll release it. There we go. And then you just kind of push down and it's clamped in and it, you know, it can't come off until you push the button and then you can pull it up. So they make that uh, trunk bag and they also have uh, pannier bags. Here's some over here, for example. It's a double, it's waterproof, it's got a roll top underneath there, it's fantastic. And it basically just clamps right on to the uh, rack, making it very, very secure and then super easy to get off because you just press the button and it pulls up. So I, I really like that. Of course, this will work with any bag mounting system or leave or anything like that that you put on the, on the rails. But I really like actually having that click on, click off, super easy to get on and off. And uh, some of the bags even come with a little key that you can use to uh, lock the bag on and off. Now, if you have bags that you love and you want to use and you really like that mounting system, uh, we do actually have adapters here uh, that allow you to convert uh, any bag that you have, trunk bag or anything like that, by attaching it to the uh, adapter and then basically uh, clamping it on and off the rack. So that's a, a neat feature. I like the adaptability of that MIK system. Okay, we also have nice full coverage fenders uh, mounted here, very well mounted to the bike. We've got a couple uh, stays back here and then mounted to the frame in a couple places as well. Same with the front, couple stays mounted to the fork and to the uh, bridge here. And uh, these are SKS fenders. Um, they are plastic but completely silent, very stable. I've been very impressed with how well those fenders have been working, especially in really uh, muddy and wet conditions. We also have, of course, an integrated kickstand and you can see that it's mounted to the frame at the back here so it's not going to collide with the pedals if you're moving the bike around and have the kickstand uh, deployed. Uh, this isn't a high-speed kickstand. In other words, when you lean the bike, you can see the kickstand is no longer on the ground. It doesn't pop up. Whereas uh, sometimes uh, some European bikes, they use that kickstand where as soon as you lift the bike off the pedal, uh, the kickstand has to release and that's for regulatory reasons in uh, the EU, but uh, we don't have to worry about that here. But it is a uh, well uh, connected to the uh, bike with those two bolts there. And on the D-Lite GX roll-off, we've got the Rock Razor tires from Schwalbe. They have some puncture resistance. Uh, they have the race guard, they're tubeless easy, it's a travel star level three. And basically it's a, it's a really neat tire actually. I've really enjoyed riding with these tires in a variety of conditions. They've got these smaller kind of knobs here in the middle so that when you're rolling along on pavement, here we go, it's uh, not a lot of rolling resistance. It rolls really well. But you still have lots of traction should you get into uh, sand or loose material, gravel. And then on the side here, we have much larger knobs. And really those, you know, can be rolling along those uh, on pavement. But when you get into mud, uh, because that's one of the, the disadvantages with the Supermoto X, it's a great tire for everything except for mud. Whereas I find with the Rock Razor, you can, you can really uh, dig in a lot better because of these uh, side knobs here. Now, these bikes are both using the same rims. It's a 35 millimeter rim. Uh, here we go, uh, from Rody. Uh, and uh, so that means, you know, easy enough to swap the tires. So if you get the Vario with the Enviolo because you don't want to, maybe you don't want to invest in the roll-off system, or you really love the uh, continuously variable transmission, uh, but you want the Rock Razor tires, not a problem. Obviously, we can install those Rock Razor tires or, for that matter, any other of the tires. And while I'm actually thinking of it over here with the Vario, this test bike we set up with the uh, Suntour Ion, which again, it's the E45, so it's an e-bike specific uh, fork. Um, and 
the uh, O2, Fusion O2 uh, rear shock instead of the uh, Fox system, and we still again have the uh, through axle here as well. So yeah, uh, great tires. Um, they don't have a reflective sidewall though. Uh, these are more of a off-road oriented. They're great on the road, but really good on off-road as well. Um, so if you're, con I mean, we've got the reflectors, got the lights, but if you're concerned about not having that reflective sidewall, you can actually add that to a tire like this or add reflectors to the fork or something like that. So I've already mentioned a few times that we are using the uh, Bosch Performance Line CX. It's a mid-drive motor. It means the weight is better distributed. It's in the middle of the bike easy to change a flat tire. It's also a very natural riding experience because of course the motor is turning the uh, belt or normally a chain but in the case of this bike a belt and that's how your bike is normally propelled by you turning the chain or the belt and that moves the bike along. So it feels very natural. It also means you're leveraging the mechanical advantage of your transmission. So with the roll-off hub there with the 520 percent gear ratio when I choose an easier gear in the hub it immediately impacts on the motor and it makes it easier for the motor to climb up the hills. Uh, so it's nice having that linked together. And of course with the Bosch CX line, that means we're getting Bosch's top end drive unit with a maximum amount of torque, 75 newton meters of torque. A lot of times you'll hear uh, wattage talked about for a motor, but really what's important is the torque and the torque is what you need to get you up the hills. And definitely you can get up the hills with the uh, Bosch CX. It's um, one of the most powerful drive units available on the market. The Bosch CX not only gives you more torque, it's also very responsive. So all the Bosch units are uh, listening for your torque, that is how hard you're pedaling, uh, the cadence, that is how quickly your legs are spinning, and the speed of the bike a thousand times per second. So it's essentially reading your mind. What that means is that when you start on a really steep hill halfway up, you don't need a throttle to get you going because the bike doesn't have a throttle. The Bosch system doesn't have one. It's not legal in a lot of jurisdictions. It's not necessary because as soon as you start pedaling, put a little bit of force on the pedals, it's going to sense that. It doesn't have to do a full rotation or partial rotation. It doesn't really need any movement. You just put some pedal a force on there and immediately you get power from the motor to help you climb up virtually any hill. It's also very uh, responsive. You can pedal at very high RPMs and it'll still uh, keep up with you, which is uh, really nice. And the CX mode also has what Bosch calls EMTB. So I'm going to turn the bike on here. That's the power key. The latest version of the software does actually remember if your lights were on the last time you rode the bike, you can see that they were the last time I rode it and so the lights automatically come back on. We've got our current battery level up here, the current speed, the uh, current level of assistance, and a trip computer down here that I'll uh, take you through in a few moments. To change the level of assistance, I have a remote here that you can reach with your hands on the handlebars so you're never having to actually remove your hands and touch the uh, screen. All the buttons you need are over here. So press the plus, that'll move me up to Eco. Eco gives me about 50% of my input power, so it uh, really is not a lot of assistance. Um, I ride with it sometimes, actually. It's uh, very smooth and uh, doesn't give you a lot of power, and it certainly extends your battery range. On a dual battery bike like this, me riding uh, around here with the hills and mixed terrain, you know, I'm, I'm giving you real world numbers, not based on theoreticals. Uh, I could easily get, say, 250 kilometers or more with a dual battery system. Most people like to ride on a little bit more of assistance. So if we go to Tour, for example, that's 120% of your input power. So it's essentially doubling what you're putting into it. And uh, But input power, again, we're talking about it listening to your torque, your cadence, and the speed. So you pedal really hard, it gives you more pe power. You pedal lighter, it gives you less power. So very natural, very intuitive, very responsive. And on that tour, giving 120% input, dual batteries like this, again, you know, 120, 140 kilometers is easily achievable on mixed terrain with some hills. Now, when I press plus, it says sport up here, but I'll do that again, and you'll see down here it flashes EMTB. So this bike is programmed for EMTB. We can program it so that sport is just another level between tour and turbo, turbo being the maximum uh, assistance level, 300% assistance, tremendous power for climbing up hills back to that uh, sport or right now it's programmed as EMTB. That's a dynamic adaptive mode. So Bosch originally designed it for mountain bikes. Uh, when you're riding a mountain bike on tif difficult terrain, technical riding, you don't want to be fiddling with the up and down to adjust the levels. You just want to set it and forget it. And that's what it does is that you set it and you don't have to worry about it. 
if you see a hill coming up and you pedal really hard, it's going to give you more power because it knows you need more power because you're pedaling hard. You pedal a much lighter, it's going to dial that assistance back down because it wants to preserve the battery life and it knows that maybe you don't need as much power. So some people really like having the EMTB. They'll just leave it there and they'll ride with that all the time. That way if they you know, are going up a big hill, they don't have to put it onto turbo and then remember to move it back down at the top. If they forget, you know, that could use up quite a bit of their battery because uh, turbo is obviously using more power. With that EMTB, it moves it down for them automatically. Uh, some people though like controlling it themselves and they'll have us change that from uh, EMTB to sport. I should mention there's a uh, protective film on the display right now. Uh, so it may be a little bit harder to uh, read than it normally is. And, you know, speaking of uh, protectiveness, the display can be removed and actually it still operates when it's off the bike. So you can check all of your trip stats, which I'll show you in a few moments. You can permanently mount it by uh, uh, putting a screw through the bottom, through into the bottom of the display, but it is nice being able to remove it. You know, here's a good example of the Bosch reliability and availability of parts. If I accidentally dropped my display and the screen was fine, but the outside was uh, broken, I can actually order in from Bosch for you just the outside of the display so that we can replace that rather than replacing the whole display. There is a USB port here on the side. We use it for diagnostics, updating the uh, software, but also you can use it for uh, maintaining the charge on your cell phone. So that's a nice feature about that as well. Uh, back to the trip computer here, the I button cycles through all the information on the display. So you can see the clock. You can see we have our maximum speed, average speed, the trip time, uh, the current battery that's in usage and the status of each battery. Uh, and the range. And this is really one of my favorite features is that uh, depending on the level of assistance we're on, the amount of battery that's left in the last few kilometers that we've ridden, it's going to project forward how much further we can go and that adjusts as we adjust the level of assistance. So that's uh, a really very useful feature to have, although with the dual batteries you're not likely to have range anxiety. But it is nice to be able to look at that and say, you know what, could I ride in turbo like the next all the way home because I'm really tired and it'll tell you whether or not you've got the range for that. We also have our odometer that shows us the total speed on the bike. This isn't my bike by the way. <laughs> Mine already has oh four or five hundred kilometers on it and I've only had it for maybe a week. Um, it tells you how much I love the bike. And uh, here we can choose to have it show us the gear that we're in. So as we adjust the gears, Pressing the, the button there, you can hear it and you can see that it shows us the, the gear that we're in. Now, you don't actually have to ride with that. For example, I, uh, and there's our uh, trip distance. And by the way, I can reset any of that by pressing and holding the reset button. My maximum speed didn't get reset because that's reset independently. Uh, but let's say, uh, I, well, I'll show you that. Here's the maximum speed, just press and hold reset. There we go, now it's a reset and all of the other data. So maybe you like riding along on uh, looking at the clock like I do. When I shift gears, it's still gonna flash on the display. See a flash there that nine, 10. So I don't actually have to ride with the gear display on because every time I press the button, it'll actually show me that the gear that I'm in. But you know, if it's really important to you to know without shifting what gear you're in, then you can press the I button through and cycle through. Uh, I missed it, do that again. And it'll tell you, you know, the gear that you're in all the time. Uh, as I mentioned, we also can see the light display. Uh, the Bosch system does have uh, shift recommendations as well. So up here, the, an up or down arrow will uh, flash when it thinks that you should shift to an easier or harder gear to make you and the bike more efficient. We also have walk mode uh, enabled on the bike. So this button up here, it actually says walk on it, but most people don't ever actually notice the button is there. Uh, you look at the plus and then just kind of scoot your finger over. There's the walk mode. And uh, when I press that, uh, you'll notice that nothing happens. The bike doesn't move and you think, oh, that's not working. Um, but in fact, on the display here, do you can see it says walk assist plus. That is your visual cue reminder that after you press the walk button, now you press and hold the plus button, and there we go, the bike moves along at about a walking pace. 
uh, five, six kilometers an hour. And that's really useful if you're maybe going on the ferry. They don't like it when you ride off the ramp, so you have to walk your bike. Or you're in a pedestrian area and you've got your groceries along with you and you want to be able to uh, walk the bike uh, around without having to push all the heavy load. Or uh, I often use bike walk mode on trails. I get to stairs. And so I can push my bike beside the stairs because it's too steep to ride up or it's not safe to do so. And uh, the nice thing is this uh, 2019 update for the Bosch CX Drive, it actually figures out uh, if you're going up a hill and you need more power, in the past it would only give you a set amount of power no matter what you were doing. With this update, if you're on a hill and you need more power, it actually gives you more power. And so really all you have to do is kind of steer the bike. You don't actually have to push it yourself. If you're pushing it yourself, then you're probably going faster than the motor is and so it ends up being a lot of work so the, the the trick is you know just steer don't push the bike just press the walk mode to enable it then press and hold the plus that moves the bike along for you and you can just steer it so the walk mode is a really uh, very handy feature to have as part of the Bosch system okay well I think I've covered all of the features of the bike there there is a lot to cover it's an incredible bike, has lots of great features. You know, I love the dual batteries, the dual water bottles, the dual suspension, the roll off, the belt. It's just uh, an incredible, comfortable bike with that uh, folding lock with the alarm built into it and the uh, uh, rack and incredible bright light with the uh, brake lights as well. I love that feature. My daughter thinks it's awesome. Uh, I'm going to take you on a ride test. Uh, the first little bit of the ride test, I'll kind of throw everything, all the information into the first few minutes. And then after that, I'm just going to take you on an adventure. If you want to go on your own adventure, head over to our website at citruscycles.ca. There you can set up an appointment to come try it out for yourself, or we can ship anywhere in Canada for you uh, if you wanted to order online. If you have questions, I'd love to answer them for you. Again, you can reach out to us on our website at citruscycles.ca. I'm really excited to take you on this ride test. This uh, D-Lite GX roll-off, it's actually my own. Just got it in from Germany, I'm really excited about it. Only put about 34 kilometers on it, but I really love it. I've ridden a D-Lite uh, roll-off in the past. This one though is the uh, first one with the electronic shifting and the uh, Gates carbon belt, which I'm really excited with living here on Vancouver Island. We get a lot of rain in the winter and not having that maintenance is fantastic. So I could ride this bike all day, especially with the dual batteries, but I don't think a four hour ride test is going to be that interesting for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of do a compressed ride test at first, uh, do some roads, some trails, some hills, just kind of try to get a, a variety of terrain in a very short amount of time. Uh, so if you're uh, not wanting to spend a whole lot of time watching my videos, not a problem, you'll get a good idea of the bike the first few minutes. After that I'll take an extended ride test, hit some other trails and things like that. And that's only if you're uh, really interested you're welcome to hang out for that and of course you can fast forward at any time. So riding position is really to me uh, ideal. Partly upright but I don't feel uh, that I'm so upright that I don't have any control over the bike. Ergonomic grips, of course, are super comfortable. I like the Ergon uh, saddle, although I may change it to uh, my Brooks. And it just uh, feels right, you know, the right width. I like the little bit of, uh, on the handlebars, I like the uh, little bit of rise on there as well. Puts me in an upright uh, position, but still very sporty. I'm cruising along around that 32 km an hour cutoff and it's a very smooth transition. Of course the bike illegally has to stop assisting at 32 km an hour here in Canada. And between, you know, 30, 132, 33, it's a very smooth transition. Coming down a hill here now. Uh, signaling there and braking with just a single hand and the brakes are, are really great these Magura uh, MG4Es 
quite responsive, lots of stopping power even with just the rear brake going on there. You know, now I'm pedaling well past the 32 km an hour, I'm up to my gear 14 now, and I'm still comfortably pedaling at 50 km an hour, so it's a nice gear ratio. As I head down the hill here, I'll keep pedaling and see how fast I can pedal, uh, how, what speed I can pedal before I feel like my legs are spinning too quickly. Okay, so for a little bit there, I was over 60 kilometers an hour. My cadence was getting fairly high, but not uh, too high. I was still able to keep up with the bike. So it gives you an idea of the uh, really wide gear ratio with the roll-off. This is the uh, D-Lite with the uh, roll-off of the E-Shift. With the uh, new Vinci, you don't get quite as wide as a gear ratio. So you may find that after, you know, certainly I don't think on the new Vinci going 60, you'll still be able to provide much uh, input to pedaling like you can with the roll-off. And On a hill like this, what gear am I in? I'm uh, close to around 18 kilometers an hour and I am in uh, seven. <laughs> so, you know, you've got a really wide ratio for both climbing and speed, which is really nice to see. So with the roll-off, of course, you can, uh, it's electronic shifting very fast. I can shift uh, one at a time just by pressing the button. And I can shift three at a time by pressing and holding. I can shift while I'm pedaling under a really heavy load. Uh, it's going to be a little bit harder for it to shift, but it will handle it because it's going to cut power to the drivetrain. One of the things I've kind of learned is that uh, if I shift when my pedal's in the up and down position, and I really don't have to uh, uh, ease off on the pedals because there's no torque at that point. So that little flat section of road there, when I first got my roll off, that was kind of a good place for me to practice just shifting because it's a little bit different timing than with the derailleur. So I would find, uh, you know, just shift back and forth between a couple of gears. After doing that for a little bit, I really was able to get the timing so that uh, I really have very little interruption. Very, very smooth, because it is a very fast shift, 180 milliseconds. It's pretty incredible. And I guess that's really, uh, so far, one of my biggest impressions of the bike, is that it is really, really smooth. Both with the suspension, comfortable riding position, it's quiet with that Gates carbon belt, and the roll-off e-shift is really, really smooth. It's quite incredible. So heading down the steep hill here, I'm reminded of one of the great things of the roll-off is I can shift while I'm coasting. So I don't have to do that silly thing uh, sometimes do where you're braking and pedaling in order to shift. I can actually just wait until exactly when I need to be in a different gear and press the buttons. And there I go, I'm in the right gear. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of a light trail for you now and then uh, some broken pavement gravel roads to test the uh, tires and the handling of the bike. And then after that I'll try to get you out on another uh, trail. So wet grass, these tires handle really well, no problem at all. Probably Rock Razor do actually uh, have a fair bit of traction, but they roll really well on the road. So now I want some dirt trails here. Uh, leaves. And a little bit of rolling ground here and the suspension's doing fantastic. Loose gravel there. All these transitions 
you know, the bike handles really well, really well. Uh, with a fair bit of loose gravel and, uh, you know, these 2.35 inch wide tires just kind of floated over it, no problem. Hitting all the potholes here. And uh, I've got the upgraded Fox suspension. For me, it's definitely worth it because I do a lot of mixed terrain riding where I'll be on, you know, stuff like this with potholes and some old logging roads and trails. And uh, the nice thing about, you know, suspension like this is you notice I'm not swerving to avoid the potholes. And on a road like this, I could obviously if there's not much traffic, but if you're riding somewhere where there is traffic, you want to be consistent. You want to try to ride in a straight line. Don't be swerving in and around potholes and trying to maintain the same speed is really key in making you predictable and safe uh, cyclist. And so it's nice having that full suspension, even if you're not doing trails, certainly this bike is well suited towards touring and commuting and you know just anything riding because it is going to uh, help you ride more confidently and safer. So now into some uh, asphalt, lots of potholes, here's a big one, no problem. You know, on a bike without the full suspension, even with front suspension, you would have been either swerving or slowing down. Here you can just ride right through. It's fairly dry, but I can kind of feel, you know, the, uh, the tire compound it's quite grippy and you can kind of feel that as you uh, roll along the pavement here. You feel really well secured and fastened to the road. And yet, uh, despite the uh, high traction characteristics of the tire, I don't feel that they have a high degree of uh, rolling resistance. You know, I'm able to get up to that 32 km an hour cutoff speed really easily. I love having the uh, integrated uh, brake lights. You know, I have to admit that I'm usually pretty good at trying to signal my turns, but uh, I often forget to signal my intention to slow down or stop, and that's nice having that built in. The other really cool thing there was as soon as I came to complete stop, my uh, roll off automatically downshifted to uh, five. And at first, I'm like, you know, I don't really care about that feature. I automatically know to downshift before I stop. And if I forget, that's okay. You know, I can manually shift after I'm stopped. You know, I can do it myself. But I have to say, this automatic feature is actually really, really cool. You just stop, boom, shifts for you, and you start uh, riding again. And I think that's one of the things, you know, I said the bike is really smooth. It's really comfortable. I'm not sure how to say this, but it's almost like the bike is facilitating my adventures. It's, it's making me not focus on biking or the bike, but on exploring and engaging in the world around me. And so little things like that automatic downshift, it's one less thing, bike thing that I have to worry about. I just ride it. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm going to uh, try to find some trails for you. Thank you on that. If you uh, have more questions, head over to our website at citruscycles.ca. So I'm going to try to give you a sense of the e-shift. When you uh, press the uh, button here to shift, it takes about 180 milliseconds for it to shift into the next gear. And when it does that, it actually coordinates with the Bosch drive unit and briefly cuts power for that shift to help facilitate the shift. So right now, I'm just going to shift back and forth between two gears, and I'm just going to keep pedaling. So I'm not at all interrupting my pedaling. I'm just pedaling and shifting back and forth. And, you know, the shifts are happening. They're fairly smooth. And I can kind of, if I really pay attention, if I'm not paying attention, I don't notice. If I'm really paying attention, I think, and it may be my imagination, but I think I can notice that brief drop in power. I'm trying to see if I can actually hear it. Yeah, 
you can hear it more than anything, you do that brief interruption of power to facilitate the shift. So yeah, I can keep pedaling just like I'm pedaling regularly, but shifting back and forth between 12 and 13 this whole time I've been talking, and no problem. Now what I'm going to do, same thing, but I'm just going to briefly, I'm going to time it so that I shift at the, kind of the top of my pedal stroke, maybe interrupting my pedaling just very briefly, maybe not even stop pedaling, but just ease off. Yeah, kind of going back and forth on that. It does seem to shift a little bit smoother. So yes, you can definitely shift under load. You don't have to interrupt your pedaling. It will facilitate the shift because the Bosch drive is going to cut the power. Um, but if you can, and see, I've just been doing this naturally. If you can kind of, it's not interrupting your pedaling at all, really. It's just at the same moment you press the button, you kind of, ease off just a little bit then those shifts are buttery smooth like you don't even notice it okay so let me try doing a hill climb here in the wrong gear to start put it on turbo i'm pedaling hard and i need to shift to an easier gear so i'm not oh yeah no problem so I'll do that again i'm not gonna ease off my pedaling at all pedaling hard press the shift button yeah and it's you know facilitating that shift for me but it feels like it's taking longer to make that shift when I'm pedaling really hard. So on the next hill, which is quite steep, I'm going to try to kind of time it so that I, again, I'm not really stopping the pedaling, but just kind of, I don't know, easing off very slightly to facilitate the shift. Hopefully the uh, GPS will show the grade here. I think, I think it's close to 30%. And really with this Bosch CX drive and this incredible gear ratio of the roll-off, I really don't expect any problems at all climbing the hill. In fact, just to uh, make it a bigger challenge, I'm gonna come to a complete stop at the bottom of the hill here. And this is where sometimes people, you know, say they want to throttle and you'll notice that uh, it just automatically downshifted to five for me because I was stopped. They'll think they'll need a throttle to get them started on a hill. But in fact, the Bosch system is so responsive that as soon as I put pressure on the pedals, I get the uh, assistance from the drive unit. So sometimes, uh, well, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Let me focus on the hill here right now. So I'm going to shift into an easier gear and I just kind of you know, at the same time I press the button, eased off just a little bit of my pedaling, you know, and it's really, really smooth that way. So it's not necessary. In fact, in three and I don't need to be, so let me go up. I didn't ease off my pedaling and you can hear it clunk a little bit more there. Try it again under full load, clunks a little bit. If I ease off, it doesn't clunk as much, but it's still a very fast, very easy shift to make. I'll keep heading up the hill. And uh, yeah, it's almost, it almost trains you because you can hear it, right? It's almost like shifting a manual transmission. When I press the button, motor cuts briefly. You can hear it, you can feel it. And so if you briefly ease off when you're pedaling then, it makes the smooth, the shifts really smooth. If you don't, it still happens. You just hear it clunking a little bit more. That's all. So. Yeah, you don't have to change the way you're riding at all. But even on a regular chain cassette derailleur, you're gonna to wanna to ease off on the pedaling. But you can certainly shift under load, which is really nice. So getting back to this idea of the throttle, sometimes people, you know, think that they need a throttle. Most mid drives don't come with one. You know, it's not legal in a lot of jurisdictions. And really, you know, it's a safety thing. If you want to make the bike go you pedal <laughs> you know if you want to slow down you stop pedaling or you use your brakes you don't have to worry about it being complicated with the addition of a throttle so i've had to stop here i'm on an incline moderately steep 
And this is where people think they need a throttle to get going, but as soon as I put some pressure on the pedals here, I immediately get the assistance from the Bosch drive unit. So I don't have to worry about getting started. A lot of times people have had experience on a, on a bike that has what we call a cadence sensor rather than a torque sensor. So the Bosch system is sensing that I'm putting torque on the pedals, gives me the power right away. With a uh, cadence sensor, then uh, sometimes you have to turn the cranks a whole revolution before it knows you're pedaling and gives you the power. And that's where people think you need a throttle, but the Bosch system, you get the power right away. So it's really not necessary. Okay, I've got some trails here. This is a hiking trail. So I'll keep my speed down because there'll likely be uh, people out walking today. Hello. But this is a great example of a use scenario for this bike where you transition from uh, pavement. You know, this is actually how I can get to work. This is one of the trails I can take. And definitely, I'm a lot happier <laughs> going back and forth to work when I can ride stuff like this than being, say, stuck in traffic. So it's nice with a bike like this being able to, yeah, it's great for commuting, great for pavement, the tires roll really well. But you can also get onto ro a trails like this, you know, with some gravel and mud and, and it performs really, really well. And that makes the uh, commute more enjoyable or your weekend ride you can hit the trails and it's a really multi-purpose bike it does have uh, this one i've upgraded to the fox suspension so it's the same mount uh, same suspension they use on, a, on their mountain bike so and it's the same frame so it's essentially the same bike as their mountain bike slightly narrower tires a little bit more of an upright riding position ergonomic grips uh fenders um, but otherwise you know it's can be ridden like a mountain bike. You can see they've done a great job of clearing the leaves on the trail here. I'll try to find some leafy sections for you to test these rock razor tires in uh, wet leaves. But on the uh, wet muck right now, they're performing really well. Haven't had any loss in traction. You know, I'm getting up to a really wet spot here. I don't have to worry, am I gonna slip out or lose traction? You're uh, handling it really well. Yeah, and we've got lots of rocks in here and uh, yeah, some muck and nice and smooth. The tires are gripping in well. Suspension, of course, smooths out all those little bumps. So it really makes it a pleasure. It's a really enjoyable ride. So when your bike is enjoyable to ride, you are going to ride it going to ride it you know anywhere you want to go so if you want to go this way on your way home it's nice having a bike that can handle that boy it is so smooth and so quiet i love having that uh, belt gravel here and again no problem with the traction on these tires so this roll off is brand new and uh, I just noticed they're shifting between seven and eight it takes a little bit longer, especially on a new roll-off. On my other bikes, the roll-off, it seems 
shifting a little bit quicker now that I've put a couple thousand kilometers on them. And that's kind of the crossover point between the planetary gear system. Okay, I've got a bit of a climb here with some loose material. If you're doing a lot of this, you may want to uh, maybe put some knobby nick tires on here so the rock raisers get your tire pressure down lower, go tubeless. I'm making it up, and it is quite steep and very loose, but you can hear I'm losing a little bit of traction at the back. And that's not unusual with the tire this width and uh, higher air pressure. But uh, yeah, if we put something a little bit more aggressive on there, run tubeless lower air pressure, then you can climb up stuff like that without uh, any slipping. But again, if that's your main purpose, then maybe the D-Lite Mountain, so the D-Lite GX roll-off, and you can get the mountain with the roll-off and the E-shift and everything, but it has a chain instead of the uh, belt. That might be a better choice, but if you're just doing that occasionally, or you don't mind changing out the tires that come with the bike, then this will handle it just fine. Okay, on some uh, logging roads, fire roads, I'll take you up another big climb, just for fun. It's a beautiful day. Well, it's always a beautiful day when I'm on my bike. <laughs> I see that on every video, probably, even in the pouring rain. But it's a really fun bike to be on. I see they've uh, tried to keep the quads out of here by steepening the slope on the cliff there, which is a good way to protect the trails. So now we're getting into some really rough stuff, and this is, you know, typical of the uh, fire roads and logging roads here on Vancouver Island. And again, this box suspension is performing really well on it. I've been able to keep my speed up. Not afraid of being bucked off my bike, as my daughter would say. Well, these rock razor tires are actually performing better in the wet than I expected. This is my uh, my own bike. My plans uh, are to go tubeless and for the winter uh, I'll probably put a bit of the knobbier tire on the front so I get even more traction in the wet because in the winter it's really wet here and slippery. Uh, but I'm actually, I may reconsider that I'll see because so far even in the wet muck and these wet leaves these rock razor tires are doing better than I thought. I'd leave the rock razor on the rear. It just was the front I was thinking maybe a racing uh, racing ray or something like that from Schwalbe. It's still a fast rolling tire but a little bit more knobs in the center there for uh, control of the wet. Second waterfall. Again, one of the great things about this bike, what Reason Miller would call their Grand Expedition Bike, is you really can go on these expeditions and find beauty like this on your bike. You can really go anywhere you want to go. Okay, one last uh, 
climb here and then I'll turn around and come back down. It's a fun ride down. It's a fun ride up too. Yeah, it's nice having the fenders because this is pretty wet here and uh, I'm managing to stay fairly mud free. The bike will be very dirty but hey that's what bikes are for. On the way down this is where I'll be uh, missing the dropper post. The bike doesn't come with the dropper post. So that's a change I'm going to make and you know legitimately so they're not marketing this as a mountain bike more as a grand expedition bike and so it's you know not necessary even this hill i don't need a dropper post i rode for years without a dropper post that's the type of thing that once you have one <laughs> you get kind of used to it what that would let me do is it'll let me drop my center of gravity for a little bit more stability on the downhill portion of this ride and so that's something that i'm gonna add I, just for fun again completely unnecessary but you know sometimes i like to ride fast down hills and it's just going to give me that flexibility of doing so a nice little waterfall and here we go down and this is another great thing you can do with a roll off because while i'm coasting I can go into the shift. I'm not having to pedal. I'm braking. I can brake. I don't have to brake and pedal the shift so that I'm in the right gear. I can triple shift by pressing and holding the button. And I'll shift three gears at a time, and that way, when I am ready to start pedaling, I'm in the right gear. Starting to get darker, and I love having the supernova light built in. Here's that wet slippery section. No problem with these tires on that. Handling it just fine. The suspension really shining on this uh, really bumpy descent. And uh, <laughs> it's great having the fenders actually. Now, if you're getting into a lot of off-road stuff with a lot of sticks and mud and stuff, then the fenders might want to come off because you can get them you know, gummed up. But on logging roads, fire course, it looks fire look like this. No problem. And it's kind of nice having it. Well, I didn't miss my uh, dropper post as much as I thought I would, actually. So, yeah, with it getting darker, it's nice having the M99 uh, light on here. Loving the modulation of these brakes. You know, because a lot of times this time of year I'll start out on a ride and, you know, maybe I'm not thinking I'm going to go very far. And it's really nice having the lights built in because before you know it, it starts getting dark and you don't want to have to chill your ride because you've got to bring your lights on. And even if you're riding, uh, you know, you're planning on only riding on the trails. It's still nice having that so when I do get back to the road and you know maybe want to head for the bakery or something before I head home, uh, I'm going to be safe on the road because the front and rear lights are built in and they're always there. And actually the uh, high beam is super bright, it's definitely suitable for uh, night riding. Generally you're not going to overshoot your uh, lights with the uh, the brightness on this light. This is a ride that I do a lot with my mountain bike and uh, this bike is actually a, a suitable alternative to it. It's really comfortable. That's one of the things I'm really enjoying about it is it is a nice riding position. I like the ergonomic grips. You know, the trail isn't that technical that I need to worry about the grips not letting me be in different riding positions.
Yeah, and it may be my imagination, but I do feel like the belt, you know, because my other my mountain bike is the D-Light mountain roll-off, so it's same frame, same suspension, but it's got the chain and the roll-off and the E-shift, and I really, it might be my imagination, but I feel like this is quieter with that belt, even smoother. that transition after 33 kilometers an hour, uh, say compared to the bike, the UV light uh, GT Mario with the new Vinci, I think, and again, it may be my imagination after having read, you know, the stats and the studies, but I do feel that after that 32 kilometers an hour, when I'm pushing past the, the belt the assistance from the motor, Perhaps there's slightly less resistance with this roll-off than with the uh, Enviolo uh, Da Vinci Optimized Metal. But it's very slight if there is any. This is definitely a fast bike. I feel like I am riding this route faster on this bike than on my mountain bike. And these tires are definitely faster rolling tires than the Navi Dex that are on my other bike. Well, I feel like, uh, you know, if you're still with me on the video, <laughs> it's been a long test ride. I've tried to do a variety of uh, terrain for you. Uh, you know, this is a bike that I'm just going to keep riding and, and riding and I don't want to stop. So if I get the opportunity, I might do a little bit more video on some single track, just again to give you an idea of what you can do with the bike. Here's another one of those hills that I love the roll off for because I can just shift into the uh, right gear when I'm going up doing that three at a time. Uh, so anyways, yeah, I'll try to do some more uh, single track video if I don't get to that or if you're tired of watching so far. <laughs> uh, you can find all the details on the bike, uh, you can current pricing, you can order online, we offer free shipping anywhere in Canada, set an appointment to uh, come try it for yourself and take advantage of our try at home program. All of that's on our website at citruscycles.ca. Okay, so next I'll head to some single track just to give you another idea of what you can do with this bike. But before I get there, I'm going to head down a fairly steep hill with a tight corner in it. And this is a great example of where the control technology from R&M is really useful. So the same hill I can ride down on a uh, bike without the control technology and instinctively I start to slow down because it's not safe to go at really high speeds uh, around the corner. First time on a R&M with control technology, I couldn't believe it, but I just, I didn't break. So I just went full speed down. And, uh, you know, felt very in control. Whereas uh, with a regular bike, definitely you'd want to be braking to make sure that you're staying in control of uh, your bike. So that's a good example of where the control technology really comes in. I'm on the uh, Stocking Creek Trail now. This is uh, one of my favorite trails to ride. It's beautiful, great in all seasons. And this is a great bike for a trail like this. Nice and comfortable. 
Now, of course, these Rock Razor tires are great on uh, mixed terrain. So here we've got uh, hard pack gravel. The trail's actually closed up ahead, and uh, I'll need to transition to kind of a muddy, rocky, rooty trail. And that's the nice thing, you know, sometimes people will talk about what they want their bike to do. And it's always good to imagine all the possibilities. So maybe you're thinking to yourself, you know, I don't plan on going on off-roading or on these grand expeditions, but you know, occasionally maybe heading out on a ride like him today and find that, uh, you know, you can't go the way you planned on because it's closed. Are you going to go back or are you going to continue your adventure? And when you have a bike like this with the full suspension with these uh, very capable tires, then you can need to transition into some of the loose gravel like I'm on right now. Or the uh, mud and roots and rocks ahead, then it's going to be really easy to do that. You know that your bike is capable of it, even if that's not how you plan on using it. You may be surprised to find out that you use it in different ways than you plan. Another great example of the roll-off back there, being able to, uh, you know, pedal going down that steep hill by putting it to one of my higher gears. And as I'm kind of coasting up the other side, shifting back into the climbing gear really very quickly and easily. So you can see, I don't know if you can tell in the video here, we've got lots of roots, some rocks. Roots are wet, it's muddy. And again, because this is the same frame, same suspension as the mountain bike, you can expect it to handle this no problem. Rolling over the roots is no problem. Your back end isn't uh, skidding out on you because of that full suspension. That's something that sometimes people maybe don't, uh, aren't really aware of with the full suspension, it's more than just comfort, right? It is giving you that control. My back end is following me over all these roots and bumps and rocks. And it's not skidding out or sliding away over the roots like sometimes can happen on a hardtail. up with a pretty uh, big hill coming up here and just for fun actually I'll turn around and head back up it just to kind of again give you a sense of what you can achieve with this roll off speed hub with the 14 gears. Again lots of modulation in these brakes so I can choose a controlled descent without locking up either my front or rear wheel. Just head back up that hill to give you an idea of uh, what you can do. I'll put it up to turbo. This is an interesting hill because uh, the first part a little bit steep and it levels out here. So with this e-shift I can shift to a harder gear. Now it's hill shift to an easier gear and you can hear it was struggling a little bit there because I had full load on the pedals. If I had eased off a little bit, it'd be easier. So I'm going to slow right down. I'm in one. <laughs> this is awesome because I can just crawl right up this hill. And that was super easy. So I tried this bike the other day with, uh, or sorry, I tried this hill the other day with a bike with the uh, New Vinci. I definitely wouldn't have been able to spin like I did coming up there. On the Nuvinci, I'd be having to pedal quite hard because the gear ratio isn't as wide. So I can't go into as easy of a gear like I could with this roll off. And is able to just uh, really just crawl right up. Now, you know, I could do that again and I could probably do it at about, uh, I think that time I was doing maybe 15 kilometers, an, or sorry, uh, five kilometers an hour. I could probably do it with, uh, say, 15 kilometers an hour if I actually eased off on the pedaling to shift to the gears more quickly and then actually pedaled harder, maybe stayed in 
gear three or four instead of all the way down to one. But I just wanted to show you that even if you're not, uh, don't have really uh, a lot of strength in your legs, as long as you can keep spinning those pedals and you put it on turbo, then you're going to be just fine. Okay, there's a fun trail here in behind Fuller Lake. You won't know it's here unless you're looking for it. And, uh, you know, this is, it's, it's a really fun, not incredibly technical or difficult. And that's what I love about this bike is that, you know, I can come and ride on stuff like this and it's capable of it. Got the full suspension, these tires are gonna handle it well. Obviously, I'm not heading up Maple Mountain and doing, you know, double diamond trails and big drops and jumps, but uh, this kind of stuff it works really well. And what I love about this bike is, you know, I'm about 15 kilometers from my house. And it's a mix of uh, paved roads and rail trails uh, with hard packed gravel to get here. And it's the perfect bike for doing that because it's got these uh, fast rolling tires on the pavement, comfortable riding position. We've got the rack, I brought my bags along in case I stop at the bakery on my way home. And when I get here, it's fully capable of doing these trails. So that's, uh, you know, the really fun thing about this bike is you can kind of do everything, except obviously the really extreme stuff and you do on a mountain bike. But uh, yeah, it's just fun exploring on trails like this. It's interesting with the, I don't know if I've mentioned this already, so my uh, D-Light Mountain with the roll-off with the electronic shifting, I've about 2,000 kilometers on it now. And I find that uh, shifting between 7 and 8 on it is a little bit smoother than this new bike. Shifting between 7 and 8 is just a little bit slower than the rest of the gears. Uh, whereas on my bike I've been riding for quite a while now, it's... Uh, kind of broken in, I suppose, and shifts much faster between seven and eight. So that's something that takes a little bit of time with the roll off as well. It will actually get quieter over time. I don't find it particularly noisy. I like the sound actually. Each gear is slightly different, um, but uh, it will get a little bit quieter. Yeah, so stuff like this, this is where um, I definitely would be happy to have my dropper post on so I can get my center of gravity nice and low and kind of cruise down a little bit quicker on the trail here. But even without it, I still feel, you know, in a very uh, good riding position that I've got lots of control over the bike. And of course, lots of uh, modulation with the uh, brakes here. This is where I appreciate having that EMTB mode. I can just leave it there and I can pedal lighter through the uh, technical sections and then really hammer it hard when I want to go fast or make it up a hill. And it's just going to automatically adjust for me. And that uh, e-shift is really great for stuff like this where you know you're trying to watch your uh, not, actually I've never really thought about that before that's a huge deal <laughs> um, you're trying to manage your pedals as you're going over roots and rocks so that you don't getting pedal strikes but you're also wanting to try to shift to be in a different gear for when you roll over that obstacle and on a bike with a chain set derailer you can't shift without turning your crank arms so with this e-shift, it's actually really great for pedal management because, you know, I can be rolling over something and my pedal is equalized and still shift to be where I need to be. So there's really a lot of benefits to going with this uh, roll-off e-shift system. <laughs> I 
I remember uh, I used to ride this trail with my uh, Hardtail's uh, R&M Charger with the roll-off with the uh, manual shifting. And I remember riding it the first time with the D-Light and uh, being so impressed with the full suspension because this has a lot of uh, little rocks all over it. And so, you know, you'd really have to slow down because it was rough. It was, uh, you know, uncomfortable and uh, you felt like you were gonna get thrown off your bike. And now with the full suspension, I can just cruise along as fast as I want and stay in control and actually stay comfortable as well. And that's the thing is, you know, sometimes people think I don't need full suspension, but if you had it, then you might come on, riding on stuff like this more often, whereas maybe right now you're not. Maybe you don't know that it's there, and that's, you know, that little trail I started this segment with. <laughs> Again, I just ride my bike around and look and see, hey, it looks like there's a trail there. Let's see where it goes. And that's one of the, one of the uh, big benefits of having a bike like this is you can just start exploring, you know, like they say, it's a grand expedition. You can just start riding, seeing where things go. Well, these rock razor tires live up to their name on the dry, loose stuff here. They perform really well and probably throughout the video you've heard stones in my fenders. And uh, that's because these, these tires have so much grip and traction that they are picking up little stones every now and then and kind of throwing them up. And it is nice having the fenders to catch those so I'm not getting uh, stone chips on the frame. Yeah, I do find as well with the e-shift, I'm more inclined to shift more frequently and really find that perfect gear for whatever I'm doing compared to a conventional drivetrain. I've probably mentioned a few times already, but I do love having the uh, water bottles right up front here. That cageless system is fantastic. You know, and the great thing about an e-bike is that I can do these longer rides, you know, even if I only have an hour and a half, I can come do this, uh, 
30 some K ride and have a really good time, explore a lot of ground because I'm able to move a lot faster and I don't have to worry about, you know, getting really tired and being far away from home. So I'll head back down this little uh, trail again and then I'll head home but uh, since you've seen most of the way here I don't need to show you the way back. Hopefully I've given you a good idea of what the bike is capable of. As I mentioned this is actually my own bike so I've got a lot of experience on it I'm happy to answer any questions you have about it or any of the other e-bikes that we carry. Definitely want to help work with you to help you find the uh, best bike for your needs. This is certainly a good option to consider. Lots of possibilities you can ride with it. So much fun, so comfortable. And I love the low maintenance aspect of it. I'm going to be able to get home after a muddy ride and not have to worry about uh, cleaning out my drivetrain. So for the uh, detailed specs, to reach out with any questions you have, head over to our website at citruscycles.ca.